Before I can answer the question of how long my Model 3's battery will last, I need to set some context and give you guys some concrete examples so you know I'm not just pulling numbers out of my rectum. And there is no shortage of examples to look at. Take for example this Tesla Model 3 that has over 500,000 kilometers on the odometer without a single battery replacement. If you watch the channel Out of Spec, Kyle bought an electric Coda that was sitting on the dealer's lot for 10 years, so long that the tires actually melted into the pavement, and it still had charge in the battery. Then there's this 22-year-old 2002 RAV4 fully electric, and it still gets 84% of its original range on its original NIMH battery pack. Here's a 2014 Model S with over 700,000 kilometers. There's plenty of examples of EVs out there with hundreds of thousands of kilometers on the odometer, and yet we still, for some reason, get people saying, hey, you're gonna have to replace your battery in a couple years. And it's weird that it's 2024 and we still see people saying that. If you don't know much about EVs, I want you to take a guess at how long the warranty is on your average EV battery. Pause the video and go type it in the comments. You done? On my Tesla Model 3, it has an eight year, 160,000 kilometer warranty, whichever comes first. And that is industry standard. And so my question to these people is if EV batteries failed after only a couple years and they had to be replaced very, very frequently, do you think they'd have such an amazing warranty on it? All these car makers, especially Tesla that only makes EVs, would be losing money hand over fist replacing batteries. And by the way, that warranty isn't just that the battery just works. In my Tesla's case, it's that it has a minimum capacity retention of 70% after that period. All this to say that the idea that EV batteries only last a couple years is a myth. It's complete bullshit. Now, that's not to say that some batteries don't fail, they absolutely do, but that's also the case with gas engines and gas cars. Just take a look at what's happening with the 2024 Toyota Tundra right now. And one of my favorite things to show around is a study that was done recently on EV battery replacement rates. And here's the most important bit, and I quote, across all years and models outside of big recalls, only 2.5% have had to be replaced. For cars older than 2015, replacement rates are 13%, but under 1% for cars from 2016 and newer." End quote. So basically only the very early EVs where people were trying to figure out what the hell they were doing were the ones with high failure rates. I'll leave a link to that article in the description if you want to read it. Okay, so that was us talking about outright battery failure, but what about degradation? After all, the more you discharge and recharge a battery, the less capacity it retains over time, right? And for that, we need to talk about something called cycle life. Every battery has a cycle life rating, which is basically how many times you can fully discharge and recharge that battery before it's expected to hit only 80% of its original capacity, which is considered the end of life for a battery. And this cycle life differs a lot based on the battery type. And to start our journey about talking about cycle life, we start with the humble smartphone. Think about how long your phone battery lasts. I don't know about you, but I keep my phones for years before I upgrade, discharging every day and plugging in to charge at night, and I never see a a noticeable drop in battery capacity in that entire period through the years that I own the phone. Phone batteries use a chemistry called LCO, lithium cobalt oxide, which has a cycle life rating of 500. People often make the mistake that the type of lithium batteries in phones are the same as the ones in EVs, but that is not true. They are a different subtype of lithium battery. Most EVs, like the Teslas I was talking about with hundreds of thousands of kilometers on the odometer, use a battery chemistry called NMC, nickel manganese cobalt, and those have a cycle life of 2,000 four times what a smartphone's battery is rated for. So we can take that cycle life and extrapolate that out over how many charges the battery is rated for, and we need to take into account the degradation that happens with every discharge and recharge of that battery, because you get a little bit less range every time. And so I wrote a little script, and you basically feed it in the battery cycle life, the range that your car gets on a full charge, and it spits out how many kilometers that vehicle is expected to get over the lifetime of the battery. Now, of course, this is just a rough estimate. You got things like AC and heating, consuming some of your battery, you get the picture. So this is just a ballpark. And for today's example, let's take my Tesla Model 3. It has a rated range of 438 kilometers, and if it used NMC batteries, we can plug that in. And you can see the lifetime mileage for this battery is expected to be over 750,000 kilometers. And now you know why you see so many Teslas with high mileages still on their original battery pack, because that's how long those batteries should be lasting. But here's the thing, my Tesla does not use NMC batteries. My specific Tesla uses lithium iron phosphate batteries, also known as LFP. And while they don't hold as much charge and they're a little bit heavier, they more than make up for it with 10 
thousand cycles or 20 times what your phone's battery is rated for. And if we plug that in with my car's range, you can see that the battery on my car has an expected lifetime mileage of close to 4 million kilometers. And so to answer the question, how long will my Model 3's battery last? A really long time.